Welcome to the Meat and Potatoes podcast. We're here with Bentley Wilson, who is the co-founder and CEO of Cartograph. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Oh, you bet. Thanks for joining us. Um, we've been talking a little bit before we jumped on, and there was a talk of like some profanities. We're, <laughs> we got those out of our system. Yeah, we we used up we used up all the profanities, so we can just keep We're it clean. Keep here. it clean. That's right. <laughs> Um, what is Cartograph? Where did the idea come founding story? Yeah. Um, so Cartograph, what we do is we're product delivery management. And what that means is, uh, for large software companies, they often have challenges, uh, ensuring that their roadmap actually reflects reality. Um, and the reason that's important is because stakeholders across the business basically are asking the VP of product or, or the product leader, Hey, when should I tell customers that this feature will be ready or when should we start a marketing campaign or whatever it is? It all relies on certain products, you know, launching, features launching. And so VP of product is kind of on the hook for all these decisions getting made. And and right now the landscape, you know, in the software world is that the roadmap is just inaccurate completely. And engineers, you know, have so much else going on there. They're, it's very difficult for them to give an accurate estimate. Um, and so it's just a, a really difficult situation. Um, I view it as one of the largest unsolved problems in enterprise software today. And anyway, so we basically use data to ensure accurate timelines and, and do some forecasting and all kinds of tools to help planning more accurately. Um, so that's kind of what Cartograph is. As far as how we started, it's been quite the journey. We uh, were four years old as a company. We're still, you know, always, always uh, just getting started kind of thing. Um, we started four years ago, me and my co-founder, Spencer Jack, um, we met uh, probably five years ago, and he comes from more marketing background, I come from more engineering background. And um, I was kind of working on a project uh, essentially to solve this problem. I, you know, founding story, I kind of have spent my career, I guess over the last 10 years or so, um, I, I was a self-taught web developer kind of in high school, you know, saw that as a way to, to live a good life and have a good career. and. And then uh, kind of maybe not your standard, you know, uh, engineering type guy. And quickly kind of in my, at, you know, at basically at 21, 22, started getting pulled into projects to be a go-between between very technical and business and to help project manage and do those things. But I, I started to get, you know, on the hook for those timelines like I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And I'd get questions of, hey, why is that estimate so off? You gave us this estimate and, and I'd kind of say, that's what engineers gave me. And I tried to give some padding and... And it's really difficult, you know, problem, especially for the people that are the, you know, the ones dealing with it. And so I kind of got a taste of the problem and started to build a couple products, you know, one product, obviously, and iterated on that. And, and, uh, and, you know, to save you the long story short, uh, we, we iterated, did two major pivots, um, in Cartograph started with a different name, two major pivots, all with trying to attack the same problem, but, uh, landed here and, and, you know, really excited and feeling like we're in a good spot. Um, definitely feel validated and product market fit and all that. So, um, yeah. Very cool. So you came from a pain point of I'm in the middle now mm -hmm. and I don't like it. There's gotta be a better way, a better solution, better mousetrap. Yeah. Yeah. That's essentially it. Right. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple when you, when you say it that way, it's the, the four year journey has definitely not always felt simple as you know, that's how startups are. It's, it's always tough and painful and, and iterative. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just, this problem is so horrible. And why are we just guessing? It was just, you know, I'm, I'm getting guesses and I'm adding more guesses to that guess of a timeline of a forecast. And then I'm handing that to business leadership, kind of trying to tell them, Hey, we're 50% sure on this. And then it kind of gets taken as concrete because they need something a little more concrete, not perfect, but, and, and, it, and then at the end of the day, it wasn't even 50% close, you know, and it's all just based on these guesses and it creates so much pain because customers get lost, money gets spent, budgets are wrong because it didn't get shipped. It, 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 it really, the impact of an accurate product delivery timeline is massive. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, I was and I'm still shocked that data has never been really used to solve the problem with how I impactful, the, you know, it can be. And yeah, that's exactly what we're doing today. So, yeah. Yeah. Whether it's a small organization or big organization, you could probably just walk in to an office and feel angst if uh, deadlines are being missed mm -hmm. or if uh, the 
product is supposed to ship and it's not mm -hmm. you can be, read it on in body language right yeah 100 percent. yeah because some person like me that couldn't can barely operate a computer but can sell the heck out of something has told somebody get ready here it comes right and then you know an engineer that can't even talk to a person it's like what are you talking about it's not that's two months away right exactly yeah yeah Just consternation yeah all over the place no absolutely and we we see these all the time right i mean our we joke our 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 demos and our sales calls are often just you know we start with two basic points and we say hey your whole your whole company kind of relies on your product roadmap right and they say yep and then we say your product roadmap is kind of bs right and they say yeah and they laugh and it's it's this funny thing but it's it's real and you know as a startup we've we've kind of fluctuated over the years and covid was interesting for everybody and it was just just as much for us and you know we grew to you know 10 plus headcount at one point and right now we're less than that um but at that point we had more engineers and, and we were having this exact problem right and we're a company trying to solve this problem having this problem and um and our investors you know who we're very grateful for often would joke and say it's really ironic that you guys have the problem that you're trying to solve and because we had customers and we had a, a wait list and all these things and and we're like yeah just one more month one more month one more month and you know at that point I, i'd kind of started to transition more to sales trying to grow revenue and things like that and and I just felt it even stronger than ever because it was like I am being called the you know I'm I'm being I'm a liar to these people because I keep telling them what we think and then it ends up being wrong and anyway so it's yeah it's any any software company really does have the problem and um, but on that point you know the larger you are the bigger the pain right I mean I always tell the story of if you're a startup and you have five engineers it's easier at least to feel like you can get around a table and say what do we think guys you know do we think we can get this done in a couple months or, you know, but if you have 200 engineers, you can't exactly shout into a room and hear like a cohesive, you know, October 7th type thing back. Right. And there's just too much going on. There's too much inter interdependency across teams. And, and that's really where we found our sweet spot. And, and, you know, my background, I, I, I love enterprise. I love the way big companies work. Um, B2B, you know, enterprise SaaS is, is kind of, it was always kind of the the north star for me um and and so yeah it's it's been an interesting journey but you're right you know any software company you walk into and it's like palpable in how painful it can be so yeah yeah and the ironies are thick right um let's just use that example again like the cto 15 years of experience worked at three different companies and uh with the problem you're because it's solving you mentioned data otherwise it's like gut instinct mm -hmm. exactly right? yeah it's like oh that is three weeks yep <laughs> that is three months right yeah and they might have a pretty good idea just based on experience yeah um but you can't factor in all the variables mm -hmm. right um three of the engineers might get food poisoning right all of that yeah right right it's my version of hell so kudos to you and your team for like trying to solve that. Cause I never believe anybody. Yeah. Right. Well, and that, that's the result, right? I mean, that's, you have go to market people who they just, they, they, they get glossy eyed. They say, yeah, whatever, you know, I'm just going to tell my, my, you know, contact it's going to be a year or whatever it is, you know? And we even had one prospect tell us, you know, our, our strategy is whatever engineering tells us we double it. And that's, that's how we try to keep ourselves. Okay. And it's not exactly a great strategy, right? And yeah, I, I hear that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, if there's electricity involved, I don't believe the person. <laughs> if it's, uh, you know, we'll do some landscaping. I believe that. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so product delivery management, right? Mm -hmm. You guys have a few taglines. Cartograph creates timelines based on reality. Reality is important. Mm -hmm. Um. I get how to do that in a lot of things in life. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if there's electricity involved, it gets a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Um, what is the product you guys are building that will enable these folks to like clearly see things? Is it a, is it a dashboard? What does it look like for them? Yeah, it's a terrific question. So we um, we kind of view the 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 problem in kind of threefold, right? So there's three major questions that product leadership is asking. And, and really, I should just say, product as a category is pretty nascent still, 
right? It's, you know, probably come to maturity over the last five years. It's probably maybe maximum 15 years old or so. Um, you know, even 10 years ago, it was still, it really didn't exist broadly. It was more project management, you know, if you had it or you had like a te- an engineering team lead who graduated more to project manager instead of engineer. And, and, and now in the last five years, it's really kind of come to maturity where you have chief product officers at most major companies and you have a VP of product and a VP of engineering and, and you have that, that give and take. And, and, um, and so because of that, right, these, these product leaders at these large software companies are asking themselves three questions. And so to get back to that, it's the first thing is just, when will it get done? It's just, I have the problem right now, the pain right now, I need it solved right now. When will it get done? And so they have kind of these core initiatives they're working on, these core features or products that they're trying to launch. And, and usually when we get involved, it's it's things that ha- they've been trying to ship for a long time, for, for six months, and they keep getting pushed back, right? So we come in, we plug in within a couple of days, um, we, we give you a timeline, we, you know, and you're able to start manipulating that data. It takes pretty quick onboarding. We can even do it inside of a day if you're able to give us the amount of time just to onboard. Um, so that's the first question. When will it get done? And it's kind of a dashboard. We basically show you, hey, here's when it's expected. And here's, so here's, here's what you're shooting for, essentially. So we have something called a target date. So they're able to set that. And then what we show them is if it's on track or not based on where it's forecasted. So every day it gets updated with the new, you know, data of, of the previous day. And then we tell you, we update your forecast and say, here's if you're on track or not. Um, so that's the first question. Second question is, um, what can we do? So kind of a capacity question, right? That's the next thing. And, you know, we have customers we currently work with that are always saying, you know, Jira is great for engineering, but I don't know what from our roadmap to, to add, right? I don't know when to say, hey, okay, time for this next thing. Do, can we even take this on? And so what we do is, is to answer that second question is we measure uh, total output basically as an average over time. And we have different time lengths just to kind of keep it up to date, measure for headcount change and things like that. But we basically, visually, we have something called a capacity map. So this is our second major feature. And what this is, is essentially the ability for a product leader to say, okay, look, we have capacity dropping, we have projects getting completed, and they're forecasted to get complete. So look, we have open space, let's go ahead and drop a new project in and see how much capacity it's going to take. And we can figure that all out. Um, the third question is what if, and this is huge. This is the sometimes termed as the the swoop and poop by uh, by product leaders, right? Where an executive will come in, swoop in, and kind of say, "Hey, new major priority, drop everything else. Nothing else matters as much as this thing," and they drop it and drop a bomb on your roadmap, kind of. And and that's something that product leaders just have no ability to understand, forecast, push back on nothing. They just have to kind of say, "Okay," and they work with engineering to figure that out. What we've provided is this ability to model on your current roadmap, right? So you have your your reality, your roadmap based on the data and everything that we're gathering. Um, and what we're, what we're allowing people to do is essentially to build a scenario and say, well, what if we were to deprioritize this, move this thing up? You know, this thing takes that much capacity. What if all this happened? And then we show you how that affects, how that impacts all your other timelines, um, as big as org wide or by portfolio or however you want to structure it. But anyway, so that's the third question that what if, you know, what if this changed or what if we, you know, decrease capacity on this project, how much would it increase the timeline by and different things like that. So that planning is really, you know, our um, kind of our summit, our, our thing that really is important. The data work is really valuable and important. And there are teams out there that we've come across that are doing it manually today. What we've provided is tooling on top of that to take advantage of all that data, all the forecasting to plan more accurately, to to predict, to, to, to deliver, you know? So, yeah. That's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. It's, it's an enterprise tool, right? Yeah. 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 But it really is only three questions. And if you take the enterprise SAS example out, that could be applied to like people's run a mill lives every day, military, you know, building rocket ships, certainly anything, yeah. right? Totally. Yeah. I'm like, well, if these, four folks are playing a lot of ping pong uh looks like they have a little extra time maybe they could jump over here and uh it's all just like chess boarding right yeah a little bit yeah and in reality like just to be clear we we basically pull our data from tools like jira right yeah. we look at you know what are you accomplishing in jira that kind of tells us what we should expect what's happened historically and then we just say well if that continues here's likely what will happen so it, conceptually it's pretty simple that way as far as the data side but yeah 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 because if a swoop and poop happens. Yeah. And everyone's like, okay, yeah, we can do that in two weeks based on 
their previous records, mm-hmm. it'd be pretty clear to see that that is feasible or not feasible, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And what's what's interesting too is, you know, engineers are awesome, right? And I've lived in this world. I've I've been on the engineering side where it's like, yeah, my estimate was super wrong and that sucks. And I didn't think about the four other projects I have going on and I didn't think about that I'm out half of next week and I didn't think about how I have a dependency on so-and-so to get this to me first. And that's really where the problem originates, right? It's it's these estimates that we get from engineering. It's not that engineering is bad at estimating. It's 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 not that you know they're they're completely inaccurate or they're not. It, it's just that their job is to build and to do to be engineers, right? And in reality, you, you think about the problem at a base level. There's just it, it's a solvable problem. There's just a lot of variables to it, right? And there's not that many unknowns. You know, we we know what the variables are. And so in reality, just because the, the simple fact that there are so many variables that impact it, you probably need a computer to manage and track and remember all those variables and, yeah. and quantify them. And so it's, you know, as far as that goes, it, it's a perfect problem to apply software to. Yeah. If you were to be airdropped into an office complex that had a bunch of enterprise SaaS companies and you have one day, just wander around, it sounds like you're the person you'd want to sell to would be the, the one feeling the pain, which would be like the product VP of product. Is that accurate? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so you're doing apples and apples there, right? Like for you and me, it's apples and oranges because I've never been in that role or that position. Um, so they're going to know you guys are speaking the same language right for sure. out of the gate, right? For sure. And they'll laugh you out of the room or they'll buy or they'll give you the, lo- the long maybe, which is the worst. Yeah, right. Um. How does the sales process go? Yeah. So like I said, we're, we're fairly early, right? We, we've been in business for four years. We, we completed our final pivot about a year ago um, and started kind of market testing and had an MVP version of this. So we, we've had three main products and we've taken essentially the same code base each time and, and pivoted it. This time we ended, up, uh, we ended up kind of building our MVP and testing it with the market and that experience was um, honestly crazy. Um, this is just under, or sorry, just uh, over a year ago. So it was about last February, we really started to take it to market and start to ask people about it. And, you know, I had people say, holy cow, you just gave me chills. Like, can you really do that? Or a lot of skepticism, but kind of healthy, you know, meaning like, this is my biggest problem. Can you, I don't believe you can solve this. Like, there's no chance. This is just something I've had to live with my whole career. And because of that, it, it, it told us a lot of things, right? But one of the biggest things is just how massive the problem was, right? It was like not something we'd come up with or not something we're trying to, you know, not the solution looking for a problem, but it was very based on our, frankly, years of, of grinding and, and, you know, we always say living like cockroaches, just being unkillable uh, to, to identify this small market opportunity, you know, and, and, uh, and so that was incredible. That kind of taught us that, wow, we could actually sell this thing and then, um, from there, we we brought on our kind of a third kind of quasi co-founder in our CTO. We brought him on and said, "Hey, we we need help." You know, I to be frank, my my engineering abilities, my web development is I'm really more of a front end guy. So I kind of started in that world, started more in like marketing development and and all that. And we now had moved from a product that I could build to a product that was very data centric and um, needed you know all the all those types of things. So we brought him on, and you know. Fast forward to now, you know, so that sales journey just taught us how, wow, this is sellable and we barely have a product, you know, at that point. And to now it's, um, as long as we can get with the right person, it's, it's right now it's, it's almost always not an if, but a when, um, it's how it feels at least. And we, you know, we've been selling for four years. We've been selling worse products for four years, you know, for three years before. And, and now we're selling a product that, that has traction, that has buyers, has customers and users. And so I would say we're pretty good at actually selling software. Um, but, but yeah, now the VP of product just almost always is like, wow. Yeah. Like let's, can we try this? Can we pilot it? Can we, you know, so it's pretty quick. Almost every time we're piloting at least with the customer and then trying to move towards a full contract. That's great. That's got to feel good. Yeah. Yeah. And then hopefully they tell their friends, right? <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. Free we're marketing. We're getting there. Yeah, totally. Very cool. Um, you are, a glutton for punishment, obviously, like what you've described as the classic entrepreneurial journey. But then you're going to do an event, which I could have told you not to do. <laughs> I wish I had talked to you yeah, before <laughs> we decided to do it. Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here at any point. April 14th. Yep. 
and it's called Delivered. Correct. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So Delivered is uh, meant to be kind of a community event. And, um, you know, we, it, product, like I said, you know, to lean on that, it's it's still pretty nascent, meaning it's 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 still coming into its own. You know, there's there's um, a lot of concepts and there's no great definitions, you know, and they're, they're forming, but they're still vague. And, you know, we kind of thought, especially in Utah, you know, there's a couple of awesome events that happen specific to product, uh, product management and, and kind of that broader category. Um, but, you know, we felt like there was nothing that really encompassed the whole process of product management and, and specifically this delivery portion that we're so focused on. Um, it just, it, it doesn't get really any attention. And so we said, well, why don't, you know, I'm, I was really, um, you know, felt, felt like it was important that we don't make it too, uh, salesy or, you know, have too much teeth on it, I guess. Um. So we really wanted to just kind of make it a community event. So that's why we branded it a little bit differently. We called it Delivered. We didn't say it's the Cartograph, you know, customer event or, or anything like that. Um, and we just said, just come, let's do a day and, and you know, let's get some of our customers, some 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 uh, people who are not our customers to come and speak, learn from them, um, and, and just kind of rub shoulders. And, and you can really tell that the product community um, wants something like this, you know, and is looking for something like this. So it's been fun to kind of, See how you know. See how it's grown just over this short period, and we're really excited about it. It's yeah, April fourteenth, as you said. Um, we've got a couple great product CPOs, VPs of product. We have a couple flying in uh, from out of state to speak at it, um, and uh, it should be a ton of fun. So yeah, very cool. And the thing with a uh, product delivery that even an idiot like me knows that once you have a date, you got to deliver. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, we we we're booked. We've we've got a deposit down on the space. So we're we're there. We're there on April fourteenth, uh, regardless. Train's going. You're on it. That's right. That's um, right. what are you uh, what are you most excited about for your for your next twelve to eighteen months? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, like we were, we were kind of talking before, right before we got started, um, that we we kind of feel like we're starting to exit the super early stage and. It's been a journey, as I've said, right? Um, some of the hardest things I've ever gone through have happened over the last four years. Um, and it's been worthwhile and rewarding and, and we're grateful to be where we are. Um, but that said, we feel like we're in a, at an inflection point, right? We've, we've raised you know, a good chunk of money. We have some great investors behind us. Um, we definitely view the next 12 months or so as our, our entry point to scale. And um, you know, we're very small. We think that we'll be orders of magnitude larger than we are in 12 to 18 months most likely and uh and yeah we, we kind of view our our journey especially with where the markets are right now right we've always been small lean spend hardly any money um you know capital efficient so uh, you know most most vcs are you know happy with us when i meet with them and as far as that goes and and then we're now at a point where we believe we have a blue ocean product market fit in enterprise SaaS, right and you know you ask 15 or 16 year old me that was getting into this stuff and learning about it and, and learning from Omniture and Josh James and John Pistan and all those guys. Uh, like this is a dream to be, to, you know, to be at a point where we have blue ocean product market fit and enterprise SaaS. So um, we're very excited. We believe we'll, we'll kind of do that early scale motion over the next 12 months um, and, uh, and probably kind of be, you know, maybe 18 months from now, kind of that series A stage startup uh, at that point. And, and uh, then the sky's the limit from there, I think. Very cool. Well worth the four-year struggle, it sounds like. Uh, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. Well, good for you guys. Um, yep, the delivered event, April 14th. Um, where can they find details? Cartograph.com slash delivered um, is where you can go. Uh, delivered on LinkedIn. You can also search. We have a page there. Very cool. All right. Well, uh, kudos to you and your team for uh, tackling this big old behemoth. And uh, for just being gritty, that's yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, thank you. That's that's uh, that's that's Utah startups, right? I mean, that's why I love being here, and you learn from one another. But that's you know, we don't we don't necessarily get the huge funding here like a lot of the the other places, uh, you know, around the country, and and you have to be. So yeah, thank you. It's been a ton of fun, and, and we're excited to see where it goes. All right, appreciate it. Thanks.